Electric vehicles, they are not selling in the United States of America. Instead, they're sitting on dealer lots. And here's some data to back it up. Ford is now offering up to $13,000 in discounts on their Mustang Mach-E, not to mention the fact that they also recently pulled their production in one of their facilities for their F-150 Lightning and are offering up to $15,000 off on that. Mercedes-Benz dealers are getting pissed off, Dad, pissed off. They can't sell their expensive EVs. You and I have traveled the country. We've seen the different dealerships over, over time. EVs are sitting, man. We haven't, we're not even talking about the ID4s and the, well, the Ionics are still selling relatively well, but many of these EVs, they're just sitting there, Dad. Is it a sign of the times that maybe this EV revolution is slowing down a little bit? Is it, I, I think it's, a, it's more of a reflection of the fact that the people that were, were really interested in EVs have already bought their EVs, okay? There were those early adopters that said, I got to have one. It makes sense for me. And, well, the vast majority of the population doesn't think it makes sense for them. And so they, 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 they don't have any real interest in it. Yes, the manufacturers are going to do their best to push them, but that doesn't mean anybody is actually going to go in to buy one. So I, I think most of the manufacturers overstated what they thought the market was going to be. And now... Dealers are sitting with inventory on their lots they can't get rid of. At, at a lot of uh, Hyundai dealerships, for instance, dealers are losing between two and three thousand dollars. They're selling them for two to three thousand dollars less than what they bought them for just to get rid of them. Um, mm. The market for EVs is not as strong as anybody thought it was going to be. Now, that's not to say it won't pick up in the future. It very well might. Um, and, and I think what might make it pick up is once the vast majority of EVs become less expensive than ICE vehicles. And when we see that happen, then we might see an increase in EV sales. What do you make of the Tesla? We recently got their quarterly earnings and their sales have slowed down, Dad. A lot of the talking points there are, well, it's because the Cybertruck simply hasn't come out yet. But put that aside, if you can, for a moment, it demonstrates, again, the push for electric vehicles and even affordable electric vehicles, because Tesla has the most affordable electric vehicle options they're seeing their sales, excuse me, slow down. Is this maybe a sign of a bigger macro problem, which is like consumers just don't want to buy cars right now? Or is this electric vehicle specific? Because the headlines certainly make it seem like it's EV specific. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just people are stopping, you know, finally stop buying cars.com. We own that. Uh, maybe people have just stopped buying cars. What do you think? I think it's a combination of the two. I, th I think um, part of it is EV fatigue in the sense that, you know, um, everybody talks about EVs. I think people are sick and tired of hearing about EVs and they're sick and tired of the manufacturers pushing these EVs when the vast majority of the consumers out there um, aren't really interested in an EV. Uh, I think Tesla missing its sales goals uh, speaks to even they might have overstated what they think the market is. There's that huge affordability crisis. Interest rates keep going up. Pricing, even though pricing has come down a little bit, on a monthly basis, it's still more expensive today, even if you're buying a lesser expensive car, because the average new car interest rate today is just under 10%. Well, how much do you have to drop the price of the car to get it to an affordable payment for somebody? And, and even then, it's not quite that affordable anymore. I wonder if once we get through this cycle, because interest rates will go up and then they'll come back down, if we will see this push again towards electric vehicles or if we will simply see a push towards affordable vehicles. Just the other day, we did a video talking about the fastest and slowest selling vehicles in the United States. All of the fastest selling vehicles, and there wasn't a single EV on that list. They were all the trend or the, the pattern there was they were all more affordable. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious because I think you're right. Interest rates are holding back a lot of consumers on the sidelines saying, all right, I'll just wait, period. They're not thinking about powertrain. They're just saying, I'm going to wait, period. Well, the cycle's going to go. We're going to come back. Interest rates will be lower. I think the consumer is going to look for affordability, period. I don't think they're going to care about 
electric versus non-electric. And quite frankly, you can go watch the, the social media videos of all the challenges of buying a non-Tesla electric vehicle and trying to charge it at Electrify America. So like, there are a lot of concerns around EV for most customers. I wonder in that next cycle, will we just see the push towards affordability? That's my guess. My best guess is that we're gonna see the push towards affordability. Interestingly, Tesla's kind of leading the charge there. You know, they've dropped their prices significantly. And that makes me wonder what's going to happen to all of their early adopters who are now 5, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 dollars underwater because their Tesla's depreciated so much. The, all those factors go through my mind when I think about what happens post interest rates being 10% for a new car. I I I think you're onto something. It, it, it's it's more about the affordability crisis than whether it be an ICE vehicle or an EV. And so whatever is going to fit into somebody's monthly budget, whether it be gas-powered, diesel-powered, or electric-powered, that's what they're going to go with, whatever fits into that budget. And if there isn't anything that fits into that budget, well, then it's Uber and Lyft or electric scooters. But there, it. It, it, the whole thing boils down to affordability. Until that gets addressed, nothing's changing. Which takes us back to the leading headlines. Ford offering tens of thousands of dollars in incentives and dealer incentives, federal tax incentives, and then OEM incentives to try and get people to buy those mach -E's. When you and I would travel to the Ford dealership and film, mach -E's everywhere, man. Mm -hmm. Remember that? There were just mach -E's, Like, What was your favorite line? Was they bred like rabbits. Like They were literally <laughs> just everywhere. The Volkswagen, uh, the CDJR and Volkswagen store that we would drive by. ID4s, every single week we would drive by, they were just piling up. And even the Hyundai dealership, we would see yes. the Hyundai Ionic 5 and 6 sitting there. All of those, to your point about affordability, are going to have to get incentives against them so that people feel more comfortable purchasing them. And I think you're spot on. We will see continued push towards that. Will it come from the, the federal government or will it come from the companies? Hopefully it comes from the companies. I'd like to see capitalism play out here and not yes. so much like the government coming in and saying, hey, go buy an EV. But I imagine we're going to see more and more of that. And if you can be patient, I would Keep watching it and see see which incentives come up. Uh, and there will be incentives and there will be that drive towards affordability so that they can bring more people back into the marketplace. And and that is what will get EVs sold when they become more affordable and you bring affordability back into the market. Just throwing it out there, I can't wait to see Ram come out with their EV pickup truck and somehow miraculously price it at like $92,000 <laughs> or some crazy crap like that. Because they are just contrarian, man. They're going for it. Uh, it'll happen. <laughs>